Hello everyone and welcome to the latest edition of Art Master Vision. Um, tonight I am painting a uh, an unusual figure. It's a fantasy figure. Um, it's from a company um, that I've not really known much about, but it was donated to me from a guy who was on the Steve Dean forum. Uh, called Chris or General Polex as you might know him as. Um, now you can't really see it that well but it's basically uh, just a really cool fantasy wizard and his company is, um, I think it's called Myrmidon Studio spelled M-Y-R-M-I-D-O-N Studio, something like that. Um, and it's just a really nice figure I think actually. Quite large but I guess a lot of fantasy figures are these days anyway um, so another thing you might notice is because uh, recently we had some troubles with the lighting um, I've uh, put the exposure down quite a bit so it's gonna be a bit dark to begin with but hopefully when we start getting some paint on it it's gonna start um, brightening up also I've um, had the lights pointed at a slightly different direction so they're not pointing directly at the figure so hopefully they won't bounce off into the camera and cause it to go really bright alright so um, yeah so we're just gonna start off he's gonna be um, I was trying to decide whether he's gonna be a black mage or a white mage um, or just like a fire wizard or something but I thought um, if we did him in a couple of different reds that might make him look quite nice so we're going to start off using um, black red this is Vallejo black red and I'm just going to squeeze some out into my palette and I'm going to add some black into it um, I'll see if I can show this on camera so this is what I've squeezed out uh, I'm just going to take some Andrea black for this, any black will do though. Basically I just want to darken it down so that the colour that we've got squeezed out here works as a first highlight because I want it to be a fairly dark red. So I'm just going to put some water in with it as well. So it probably looks almost completely black to you because I have put the exposure down quite a bit um, but that is definitely a dark red we've got going on here. Uh, that looks, yeah that looks about right, we'll use that. So how's everyone doing today? I hope you're all having a good day whether you're watching this on YouTube or on the live stream through Ustream. Now I'm taking this which is my Red Sable Kalinsky brush, this is uh, fairly large to what I'm used to, um, it's uh, a number one as you can see there, now this is a, a really good brush um, for undercoating, oh, actually, I actually have done that wrong, I wanted to do uh, the dark red on the outer jacket and a lighter red on the inner jacket because I didn't want it to be overpowered um, like by the the brightness of the red so we're going to do the nice deep red on the outside cloak and the brighter red on the inside cloak I was toying with the idea of using black, but since there's such large areas of cloth, I thought that um, you know black might look a little bit boring. I mean, you can make black look nice um, and interesting, you know, especially if you use uh, sh quite sharp, bright highlights. Uh, you can really draw the eye to the peaks and crests of the folds in the cloth which can give a really nice effect it's 
Let me know if this is too dark though, because I can um, try upping the exposure a little bit. I mean, I don't mind too much if the video does suddenly go really bright because I should be able to fix it. So if you would rather me try and brighten the video, just let me know. Alright, so yeah, I will try and brighten it just after I finish this colour. Uh, I think I'll give him a, a black hat. I don't think a red hat would look right. We can do the inner bit of his sleeves red, um, leaving a little bit of black in the deepest bit where the shadow is. Oh look, it's already gone bright anyway, so I guess it doesn't make much of a difference, the uh, exposure. Well, at least you can definitely see it now. I don't know, it's a difficult thing to get the lighting right on these visions. I've turned one lamp off and this seems to be alright, I guess. We never used to have much problem before. I don't know why recently we've uh, had these lighting problems. It just seems weird to me because we've done so many visions in the past and I've not changed the setup at all. See, now it's gone almost blue light. Let's see if I can change the actual camera settings itself. To bear with me for a second. I've put the exposure right down to 7 out of 100 and I've put the brightness down to about 40 doesn't seem to work much though Alright, we'll see if we can continue like this. If not, then I don't know. Maybe I'll just have to, um. I don't know. I mean, I like doing the live streams, but of all these problems and that, it, part of me thinks that we should just stop doing the live streams and I should just do uh, recordings with a proper video camera, uh, like a, a much higher quality, and put those straight onto YouTube. The only difference with a live stream is that I can get interaction with the people as I'm painting. I mean, let me know what you think about that. If you think it would be better just to do some uh, higher quality videos recorded 
and then upload it to, straight to YouTube if you think that would be a better idea then maybe I will do that either that or try a different streaming camera Alright, so now we're just using um, Vallejo Black Red on its own for the uh, base coat for the brighter red. See, the lighting's changed now and it looks really nice. If only it could stay that way. So anyway, um, I thought I'd talk about something now. Um, I'd like to ask a question as to what people have on in the background whilst they're painting. This is something that really interests me because well, because I'm a full-time painter and I work from home, then, you know, I can have anything like a movie in the background or music or whatever I want, really, as I'm painting. And I tend to like to watch uh, Let's Plays on YouTube, which is basically um, where people record themselves playing video games and they do commentary like I'm doing now over the top of it. Uh, and it's something that I actually thought about start, uh, starting myself. So, but um, sometimes I have TV programs or movies, BBC iPlayer, etc. It'd just be uh, interesting to know what people did as they painted. Alright, so now we're just going to base coat the flesh using uh, Valero Shadows Flesh. I used to listen to music on a website called We7 which was um, sort of like they just had loads of different albums on there and you could listen to music for free you just have like the odd advert that played in between the tracks but they changed it recently so that it was more of a radio station where you could sort of choose the artist and the type of music that you wanted to hear and it just played like a random selection of songs Uh, that was a really good website until they changed it. I think you can probably still choose the songs that you want to listen to if you get a premium account, uh, so which is like five pounds a month or something. I don't, I don't think it's worth it though. I'm not considering you can just look up most music on YouTube these days. You can probably tell that I'm not being that neat at the moment. I'm not really that bothered about going on the hair and that because I'm just going to be painting over those areas anyway. Yeah, Shadows Flesh is definitely my current favourite base coat for flesh. Um, so I'm going to give him a nice sort of grey white beard and I'm going to paint his stick I was thinking of doing it brown just like wood 
I mean, because it's definitely that sort of twisted wood te texture, but I'm thinking that maybe white might look nice as well. And what do you think in the chat room? Should I have a wooden pole or a white pole? Alright, so we're going to go over wood pole. So, um, I want it to be quite a light wood. I normally undercoat with dark rust or German camo black brown, which is a very dark brown. Um, but I think I'm just going to go with a, a leather belt base coat or something like that, or burnt umber would probably work alright. I mean, if it's too light, I can always give it a quick wash over with a brown brown wash or something. This, because uh, this figure is so big, actually, it makes it a little bit difficult to hold on to the base. Um, it has to go on a slot of base unless you drill and pin it. Um, I have got some plinths, actually, some resin plinths, and I was going to stick him on one, but I just didn't have time to drill and pin it before I started the vision. I've been painting some uh, Fifth Dutch militia all day today. Uh, Perry Miniatures, which is a particularly nice unit, I think. Alright, so we just got a question in the chat room. What would make a good French blue for the Vitrix uh, Imperial Guard Grenadiers? And um, there was a reply from someone um, who was quoting one of my previous recipes of Americana Deep Midnight Blue mixed with black, um, then America, Americana Deep Midnight Blue on its own, and then adding either light grey to lighten or Iraqi sand. Um, for the next highlight. That is definitely one of my favourite types of blue, especially for French. But if you want more of a true deep blue, like Prussian blue, then you can go with um, dark Prussian blue with black in it for the base coat. And then have dark Prussian blue with a little bit of Prussian blue mixed in for the first highlight and then Prussian blue on its own for the second highlight and this would be a much more you know it will look much more of a deep vivid blue even though it will be quite dark alright so moving on um, I think I've just seen a little bit of the hood there let's put some red on that Alright, so he's still drying. Um, I think I might as well undercoat the hair now whilst the uh, red's drying. Right, so I'm going to use light grey for this. And this is going to be quite bright, but we're actually going to put a black wash over the top of this. 
and then highlight with off-white or ivory. Just add in some water in with that as well. So that um, Prussian blue that I just mentioned was um, very similar to the blue that I did on the Dutch uh, militia in the last vision. I think the only difference being uh, I had a, an extra layer just by uh, mixing the colours a bit more. But it's still the basic same formula of dark Prussian blue with black and then dark Prussian blue and then Prussian blue just a little bit of extra mixing it's all down to preference really if you like um, less contrast in your layers then uh, mix the colors more and do a few more layers but if you like less contrast uh, uh, sorry more contrast then uh, don't mix them as much and have less layers So uh, someone suggested uh, some of the foundry blues. Um, I haven't used a lot of the new foundry colours. Like someone said uh, union blue. I've never tried that before actually, but I try. I bought the Napoleonic foundry set ages ago when it first came out, and uh, to be honest, I wasn't really that impressed with it. I think the um, colours don't really have near, near enough contrast you know because you, you get A, B and C like the shade colour, the mid colour and the highlight colour and the foundry style really is all about getting the right balance of contrast between those three colours but the actual colours that they released I think it's a little bit you know goes against the grain a bit into what their their style is because there's just not enough contrast between the shades I know that the um, like the Russian green is realistically very dark almost black sometimes in in the art artwork that you can see but um, you know with the foundry style you've got to have enough contrast even if you just have black as the solid base coat to keep it a bit darker but there are uh, I don't know I find a lot of foundry colours just don't have sometimes they have far too much contrast sometimes they don't have enough so you know I've not really had a great experience with foundry colours in the past So I wanted to do his belt white as well, but I think I'll probably do that after I've done the red, just so I can get in the, into the middle there without painting over the belt, or ha without having to worry about painting over it. Alright, so I'm just going to quickly give this figure a quick hair dry, just to speed the uh, drying process up a moment.
they always keep a hair dryer to hand for these moments. Alright, so that's dried it up quite a bit. So, um, somebody asked about light infantry French blue. Um, to be honest, I just tend to just use the same blue that I use for the line infantry. I don't have a specific recipe for uh, for the light infantry blue. Alright, so you can see there, there's a little bit of a black patch at the bottom of the cloak there. I think that's where, where I blacked him up before the vision. There was some wet paint under there that the hairdryer blew up. So I'm just going to paint over that. Right, so we're going to use black red on its own for the first highlight on the outer cloak. Alright, so for now I'm still going to continue to use my number one brush. Uh, I might switch down to my zero brush though uh, for the more intricate bits. So there's quite a lot of cloth on this model, which is quite good. Um, it's not every day you get to paint such large areas of plain cloth. Uh, makes for a good challenge. I think some people find it quite difficult to paint large areas of cloth because there's so much to look at and I tend to find as well that with larger areas of plain cloth that you do need to give a little bit of an extra highlight just to uh, make it look less flat overall. Like the colours can look slightly dull if you've only got two basic highlights. So on a cloak that's so massive like this at the back, I tend to use more layers and less contrast between the layers, just so there's a uh, you know a slightly nicer gradient of colour. What is nice about such large cloaks like this is if you want to do um, a pattern or something around the edge then it's uh, nice to have a blank canvas like this. It's quite interesting to me because what you're seeing on the camera looks far more contrasty to what I'm actually seeing in real life. So the camera seems to be uh, adding an extra layer of contrast. Which is, um, I guess it's good because you can tell where exactly I'm putting the paint a bit easier.
but um, you'll see what it actually looks like when I photographed it once I've finished. Okay, so now we're going to do the first highlight on the inner cloak and or the inner uh, cloth. We're going to use red for this. Now I've got two colours from Vallejo called red for some reason. One's the number 033 and one's the number 029 and that's how I tell them apart uh, when I'm writing the colours down. I just put red 033 for one colour or red 029 for the other. It's always good to write your recipes down uh, when um, when you're doing something that you're going to be doing more of. So like that um, Dutch figure I did on the last vision I wrote down the uh, combinations of colours that I used so that when it came to doing the rest of the unit I didn't forget what colour I used for what. You don't always have to write down but um, you know if you've done something a few weeks before you start the rest of the unit then it can be easy to forget sometimes but for instance the French blue if you've got a specific blue that you use for all your French then you don't really need to write that down because you know it's going to be the same blue every time So that's that. It's actually a really nice figure. I really like this figure. Um, I'll probably, if I've got some time at the end, if it doesn't freeze at any point, I'll, I'll uh, show off the rest of the pack because he actually sent me an entire adventure pack with uh, various figures, and they're all really nice. So I'll probably show those off at the end. Alright, so now for the next highlight on the outer colour, I'm just mixing in some of the dark red with the red that I've just used. Um, just add slightly more of the lighter red into that. I don't want it to be too subtle. Also I find when uh, adding water to red, it dilutes it fairly quickly. Um, so you have to be quite careful with how much water that you actually add to red. So the lining or the detail around the um, the cuffs, etc. I'll probably do in gold, so that shows up quite bright. Hopefully, I was thinking about doing it yellow, but I think yellow just make it look a bit too cartoony for my liking. Alright, so that'll do for that. Uh, so, 
whilst we're waiting for those reds to dry we'll do the first highlight to the flesh and for that I'm going to use uh, flesh base switching to a smaller brush now this is my uh, Kalinsky Sable Zero brush Yeah, this is where I wish I had a, a plinth for it so it's easier to do these fingers but then if it was on a plinth the camera would have to be higher up and I think as I moved it around you'd probably lose focus on it which would be a bit of a pain Alright, so that'll do for that. So we're going to quickly do highlight on the wood and we're going to use beige brown for this. So I just uh, finished painting a unit of uh, 71st Light Infantry Highlanders uh, yesterday. We used uh, front rank figures for that with the stovepipe shakos and the uh, they were in grey trousers but they had the dicing on the hat on the shako going around the base of the shako and it actually looked really nice uh, I don't think I've ever painted that unit before 
Oh, I probably have at some point, but I can't remember. But yeah, it's a really nice unit actually, especially with the blue on the Shaco as well. I don't really get to paint a lot of light infantry British, it's mainly line infantry that I paint. Alright, so we'll pretty quickly add that black wash to the beard, just so that's got some time to dry. We're going to use uh, the old Fateful Games Workshop Badad Black. So before I started the vision I was doing a bit of research for some inspiration on how to paint this and um, recently I've been playing uh, Final Fantasy 4 on my DS it's a remake of a classic RPG and you get um, black mages and white mages on it And I actually I just typed in um, black mage artwork and loads of this uh, artwork for Final Fantasy kept popping up all over Google Images. And, um, the black mages were symbolized mainly in blue with uh, blue colors with a black hat which I thought was all right but I think blues, I don't, know, I don't really tend to associate blue with a black mage. But, the, you know, then I, I typed in black wizard instead of mage and uh, got some different different images for that, but it was still pretty bland, a lot of the artwork. There's not, I couldn't find a lot of great artwork for wizards or anything which has surprised me really because they're so iconic in fantasy so we're going to use red as the next highlight for the inner inner cloak or the inner I guess it's a dressing gown really uh, but we're going to we're going to add a little bit of the darker red to that just to dull it down slightly I guess um you know, when you say wizard now, a lot of people associate it with Harry Potter. So, uh, you know, I've got a lot of Lord Voldemort images popping up. He must not be named. I'm going to get in trouble now for saying that. I do like the Harry Potter films, but I haven't seen them all. I think I've seen up to uh, the Half Blood Prince, I think was the last one I saw. And I was gonna go see the last one at the cinema, but I didn't I missed part one. I can't remember what it's called. But I know it's split into two parts and I missed the first part and you know, I thought there's no point in seeing the second part unless you've already seen the first part. So I didn't end up going to see it, but I kind of wish I did because it was, you know, the end of the Harry Potter films on the big screen. And they recently sh uh, re showed Jurassic Park at the cinema as well the uh, first one and I really wanted to go see that, I'm not sure if it's still on, it might be but I didn't see that the first time around I think the only Jurassic Park I saw at the cinema was the third one which is obviously the worst one
Alright, so this looks far more contrasty on the camera, as I said, but it will look nice in the photographs, you'll be able to see. I'm probably just going to use red on its own for the next highlight for that. If, if that's not um, bright enough, I'll use scarlet, which is a nice colour, slightly more orangey, um, so that works well as a highlight, sharp highlight anyway. So I'm going to do the next highlight on the flesh whilst we wait. I'm going to use flat flesh for this. I do apologise for my, my chair, my squeaky chair. I did tighten the bolts up on it, but I think they've come loose again. I have to get myself one of those big luxury leather chairs to sit in and paint. I don't know if they'd be any good for painting actually. Might get a bit too relaxed. But then you might you might end up hearing like some squeaky lever or something in the background. This is a really nice hand actually, it's sculpted really well I think. I find that a lot of historical figures, that the hands are some of the most difficult parts for the sculptors to get right. Like the uh, fingers are never really proportioned properly or you know they've, they've never really been cast properly or I don't know but it just seems like the faces come out quite nice on uh, historical figures but the hands never come out quite as nice. But I guess uh, this fantasy figure is quite a bit larger than most historical figures are so you've got the extra room in the scaling for a bit more detail okay so now I'm just going to use some oh, I'm going to get that scarlet colour and I'm going to use this as the highlight the final highlight on the inner inner robe. Yeah, this is a good colour for that. I always find as well that under these really bright lights that I'm using like I can't actually see the figure as well as under a normal incandescent light I just use like a normal desk lamp when I paint and I can tend to see the figures a bit better because I don't know why but maybe there's just not as much light bouncing back into my eyes but after I finish a vision when I look at the finished figure under a normal light it seems to look just nicer like I guess I, I have to put a bit more effort in under the really bright lights because everything shows up a bit more like the uh, the details and that sharp more and the contrast as well so I'm just going back to the second highlight I used on the inner jacket or the inner robe and I'm using this for the outer robe highlight I'm just adding a bit of water to it as well so it feathers out around the edges a bit and um, almost 
just blends slightly into the layer below. It is quite interesting though when you paint under a incandescent lamp and then when you like take the figures outside suddenly you can see all this all these imperfections that you didn't really notice before because you wasn't looking at it under a daylight lamp. This is actually a really easy figure to paint. Probably helps because it is quite big. So for the next highlight on the wood I'm going to use cork brown. This is almost like a flesh colour really, just a bit slightly, slightly browner. It's very similar to the flesh base colour though that I use. Actually, uh, quite a nice colour for the wood. I think. I think a dark pole would have looked a bit. I don't know. Wouldn't looked as good. So the uh, the date today is the fourteenth of October and already I've been seeing plenty of Christmas adverts it's not even been Halloween yet and we're getting all these adverts for Christmas it's crazy speaking of Christmas this guy's looking quite Quite like Santa himself. His red garb. Alright, so I'm going to highlight his beard using ivory. Could use off white, but I just feel like using ivory. I've been getting into ivory recently. I guess I like the slightly softer tones that it gives out. Split hair on my brush there. I'm not sure if you can see that. If you get a split hair, I usually just wash my brush and then give it a twizzle in the corner of my mouth, sort of bring the uh, hairs back together. And if it keeps happening, then I just snip it off with some. Uh, now clippers.
yeah, this white goes quite nice with the red. It's a nice contrast, I think. I also recently painted a nice um, 1980s half orc, half human citadel figure. It's a really cool figure, actually. He had uh, some chainmail and a big black cloak and a curvy sword. And they, they look so much different to what the modern figures look like. Quite a bit simpler in detail, but you know, they still paint up really nice. Right, so I was going to give him the uh, a white dressing gown belt as well. So I think I'm just going to base coat his belt now with light grey. I guess it's not really a dressing gown, but I quite like to refer to it as a dressing gown. Lazy wizards can't be bothered to get dressed, so they just go around in their pyjamas. Casting magic everywhere. As much as I like wizards, um, in uh, role-playing games, like uh, video games, I tend not to choose them as a character. You know, if you normally get the choice of warrior, wizard, you know, the rogue, the thief, etc. I think the wizard's probably one of my least favourite characters to choose. So I'm going to use gold brown for the orb. It's going to be a nice yellow glowing orb on the end of his stick. Yeah, I mean the wizards are cool, but I think I'm much more of a physical character when I play these games. I like to just get in there and batter the skeletons to death with a big club or sword. Because uh, obviously the wizards have to stand back and cast their magic because they haven't got a lot of protection and they're quite weak so if they get overrun then they can die easily but their magic spells are usually quite powerful so I guess that's a bonus I quite like the thief characters though actually in uh, RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons. I quite like the idea of being stealthy and sneaking around, stealing items from treasure chests and opening locked doors with lock picking skills. thinking about um, what's it called there's a game coming out Di Diablo 3 I think it's called I'm thinking about getting that when it comes out it looks quite nice actually it's a 3D RPG Dungeons and Dragons type game so I'm going to highlight the dressing gown belt with ivory now so I played 
I used to play a game called Legend of Mir ages ago, which was a sort of an oriental themed RPG. Uh, like you played it online with loads of other people around the world. I think it was oriental film themed. I'm not sure. It must have been. But um, yeah, Diablo is a really cool game actually. I don't really tend to play a lot of PC games though. I'm more of a Nintendo console guy myself. Like I played my 3DS and my Nintendo Wii quite a bit. Alright, so we're nearing completion now. I'm going to use Andrea Black First Shadow to highlight the hat and the shoes. So I've been watching The Fades on BBC iPlayer. I don't know if anyone else is watching that, but I think it's really good. I'd highly recommend it. Of course, if you're watching this in the future, it's probably not on anymore, but who knows? Alright, so I better actually base coat the gold before I forget. I'm going to use Vallejo Brass for that. So I was thinking the other day, what would I do if I won the lottery? Would I still paint? And part of me thinks, yeah I would still paint because I do enjoy it. I don't just do it to earn money. It's not just a business to me. It's kind of a, alright, it is a hobby really that happens to earn me money but I think what I'd like to be able to do one day you know if I did win the lottery or anything like that I'd probably either paint for free or paint for very cheap because if money's not an issue you know I'd like to be able to sort of give something to people, you know, use my skill for something good, you know, because these figures are going to be around for a long time really, every figure that I paint, even if you don't really know it's painted by me, I think, you know, they're probably going to outlast me. You know, they're not, they're not suddenly all going to disappear when I die, so the more of them I can leave behind, the better, really. It's kind of like a, you know, my little mark on the world, however insignificant it is, really. 
It's just, you know, it's a part of me that I'm leaving behind. I guess at my age I shouldn't really be thinking about that, but I don't know. It's quite interesting. Yeah, I might I might never be as uh, great or as remembered as people like Kevin Dadimore or Ian Stables and people like that. I don't know. I mean, I guess they've been around a lot longer than I have, but, you know, there will be people out there that, you know, might recognise my my work just from looking at it, I don't know. Oh, by the way, I'm just using a Vallejo light yellow to highlight the orb. I'll probably use ivory for the next highlight. Not a lot shows up on top of this yellow. This is you know, probably one of the brightest yellows, apart from ice yellow, but even ice yellow is almost ivory. So I guess uh, the conversation's got a little bit depressing. I'm suddenly talking about death, that's not good. Get back to wizards in pajamas. That's a bit more fun. All right, so it's nearly finished. I'm just going to quickly dry it with a hair dryer, and then we can sort the gold out and maybe put some eyes in, and it'll probably be nearly done. That was some ivory on the top there. I hope that gold's dry enough. I should have done it earlier, really. I think it is dry. Just dabbing it in my finger there. I think we'll uh, put some uh, Devlin Mud Brown Wash and then highlight it. So as you can see this picks out the detail quite nicely. Alright, so someone just asked a question, what's a good size cavalry base for a free man base? Um, generally, um, I'd say 20 millimeters wide at the front per figure. So if you're having a two man base, you'd have 40mm wide at the front and 45mm deep. 
or 50 mil deep depending on how, you know if you want that extra bit of room but 40 by 45 is a good size for two models or um, perhaps 60 by 45 for three models all right so we're just gonna get some this is a gold below gold we we'll use this to highlight the brass that we've just washed over Someone in the chat said uh, you don't use Games Workshop's steroid munching cavalry. They struggle to fit on 25s. Well, that's funny. The uh, Games Workshop horses are actually particularly beefy. I'm just uh, not really used to uh, fantasy figures really. I haven't actually painted anything like a Games Workshop cavalry unit in a long time. The last, I think the last Games Workshop army that I had was Tomb Kings when they first came out ages ago and uh, the actual cavalry for those, like obviously they're skeleton horses so you know they wouldn't really take out much room but the other army that I had before that was Ogre Kingdoms and they're really beefy actually but they don't have any proper cavalry I think they uh, they've introduced like rhinos or something but I'm not sure if they're official or not but you'd, you'd need something like a rhino for an ogre to ride on. They'd never fit on a horse. So someone asked a question, what are your favourite figures to paint in terms of manufacturer and period? My favourite historical figures to paint are Perry Miniatures Napoleonics. Uh, I love Napoleonics anyway, but um, I think Perry Miniatures just do the best Napoleonics that I've ever seen. Not everything they do is 100% but I think overall, in terms of consistency and variety, they've definitely got, you know, a really fantastic range. So, uh, yeah, that answers that question. But um, I do actually, I quite like uh, front rank figures as well. I think, you know, they get a little bit of flack sometimes because they are a bit chunky and 
you know, people think there's not enough variety and they're a bit stiff, but I think they're actually really nice figures and they're, uh, you know, really nice to paint. So, um, yeah, this is probably the finished wizard in his uh, red gear, a bit of a fire mage, really. He's a really fantastic figure. Um, you know, like I said, he's probably more 32 mil, I guess. I don't know, maybe I'm just looking at him in the wrong light, but he's, you know, he's a really good figure overall. Probably one of the best fantasy figures I've painted in a while. Um, so I said earlier that if I had time, I'd show off the rest of the figures that were sent to me. So I'm just going to do that now. So this is part of the, an adventure pack. Now this guy is really cool looking as well. He's got a nice lantern there. You could do a cool lighting effect on that. Uh, he's got his backpack on as well so he's you know you could imagine him venturing down a dark corridor then we've got this uh the woman well i think there's more than one woman actually there's yeah there's two male adventurers two female i think and the wizard so this is one of the women she's got a nice big stick a nice beating stick Again, she's got the backpack and all the gear. So that's a really nice model as well. It's good faces as well. And this is the other female. Dressed in her armour with her chain mail and her breastplate. She's got a, quite a tough look about her. She's, you know, I don't know if you can quite see in the light, but it's a really nice model as well. Um, Sandra Garrity sculpts apparently that's nice to know and this is the comparison in size wise to the wizard the wizard is definitely the chunkier of all these figures which kind of drew me to him the most but but they uh, they actually make up a really nice adventurer set you could definitely play a good um, RPG game with these oh and here's the last uh, adventurer there just drawing the sword. I think this is a Mao. Yeah. Kind of got a, quite a feminine look to the face though, but you can see they've got some rope hanging off the back there. That's really nice. Yeah, and just to confirm, they are 32mm uh, foot to the top of the head. which is uh, 5.3 millimeters equals one foot in scale so yeah so here's the cool wizard I think I might actually eventually get around to painting these other ones up and uh, I'm not sure if they'll be on uh, a next vision but I'll definitely get them photographed if I do get them painted up so the company I'm not sure I'm saying this right I think it's Myrmidon Studio spelled M-Y-R M I D O N. Uh, so yeah, if you just Google Myrmidon Studio, uh, then you'll get the blog that will come up, and there's some good uh, paint painted figures on there. I think these are available for an eBay shop as well. But um, yeah, definitely, you know, if you're into your role playing games, and you you're looking for some adventurers that maybe aren't your typical reaper figures then I think you know you can't go wrong with these really I'd highly recommend these there, there are other sets as well this this isn't the complete range but but yeah they're really cool all right so um I do apologize for the lighting problems that we had at the start of the vision. Hopefully you got past that. Um, hopefully we won't have those problems again, but, you know, we probably will. So, yeah, thanks again for watching, and uh, good night.